Welcome back, and uh, for those of you who were uh, thinking they may be seeing some chips on the mini lathe, something else has cropped up, and I will show you that in a second. Anyway, some new parts have turned up, and I have some cemented carbide tooling. We'll all need sharpening and reprofiling to the right angles and everything. For those that don't know, these just come with a piece of carbide cemented onto the end with braised on or whatever. And they are not set up for using straight away. So you have to manipulate them on the grinder. I have a green stone for my grinder. I haven't set up my diamond wheels yet, my CBM wheels. So we'll use the green stone, which is getting smaller and smaller. Anyway, you may notice these are red, and I already have some blue ones. And the colours on them, they're not there for some unknown reason. They're there so you can identify what grade of carbide has been cemented onto them. And here is a sheet, because you'll see, if you go on eBay, red, blue and yellow ones. The varying prices. And I think these are the 10mm ones. So that's that. Bearing in mind that I'm still working during this Covid crisis. I do rescue and recovery work, and we're essential personnel. I service, highways agency, the police, the ambulance and the fire service so we have to keep them rocking and rolling and we've been doing that over the weeks and months, well over the month since we've been locked down so I don't get no more time than normal anyway let's go and have a look what else we've got going on and what went wrong to pause what's going on here just before we do that, we'll have a look at what I did get done. I've got the holes drilled in the compound slide there for the new gib adjusters and the lock stops. And down here, I have drilled the same holes in the compound. I'll measure them at three and a half mil, but I'm guessing they were at eighth because they're not quite in line. Close enough. Anyway, while I was doing that, I match drilled the holes in the gib and I made it ballsy on that one. But the rest of my holes are absolutely pristine, so mine will be number one hole, number two hole number four hole and number seven hole or whatever that was, number five and number seven <laughs> we'll get some counting done there eh? and they are recessed and I made the new gib bolts and they fit in to my slots beautifully just wonderful stay in there and they also go into theirs a little bit but they don't stay in theirs because <laughs> theirs aren't as deep as mine and they're the old gib adjusters and I've made a new I've made enough new ones to discard all the old ones just waiting for the nuts to lock them down so that's all done ready for assembly basically let's go and have a look at what else we've got going on oh, this is my mess Oh, uh, here we go. There's my mess. Oh, we're getting there. And the tool holders, which I've finished. Now, they're all ready to rock and roll. Uh, the shims, I've bought feeder gauges for... I'll just chuck them on the floor, why not? And I've bought feeler gauges. And we'll be chopping them up. And using them as shims. The carriage block is requiring parts for the lathe to be working to be finished off now so I'm jumping at the bit to get the lathe working but like I say something else cropped up so let's go and have a look at that and see what I've been doing for the last couple of days so there's the culprit and it's keeping me up at night I think a bearing's gone in it 
and it's making a knocking noise. So to get it down, I've got to modify the winch. And there is the winch. And as you can see, it will be pulling at an angle on its anchor at the bottom of the mast there. There's the mast. There's the ladders. And there's the wind turbine. There's my welds. There's the email on my welds. There you go. There's a weld. And there's another weld. I'm oh, not about to see that one. There you go. There's another weld. A bit of spatch on that one. That one's not quite so pretty. Oh, well, it's not bad. Got it set up in the mill to remind me to mill it off if I didn't remind before painting it. And then I'm going to paint it, fit it, then I can take the wind turbine down nice and safely instead of having to manhandle everything and stop it from rocking at weird angles. And that's going to offset. Oh, your beauty. Obviously, that's going to offset the winch by that amount. So, yeah, <laughs> the winch cable comes in around about here, will go down around that pulley, come round, come up this one here, come round this side of this pulley and then go down that way and then it will pull the wind turbine up at a proper angle. So just waiting for paint to dry, don't like watching it, so I'm not going to. There she be. Thing, I dropped it. <laughs> so it's got grass in it. Oh well, not to worry. Could repaint it again. It did the trick. It's keeping the wire nice and straight up. No angles. When it pulls it up, as you can see, it should pull it up nice and straight. So the end is nigh. Very nearly running now. Got a couple of pins to grind down. They go in the. If I can find the hole in the apron. So I'm just getting set up to grind them down. Just making people aware. Uh, this is a premature resurrection, as I put it. <laughs> because basically the other lathe is broken and this is the easiest one to get going and I need a lathe to make parts to get the other lathe working so <laughs> let's get this going I bought a shaper very recently about four months ago it is not working I've cleaned it to a certain amount and I've recently got the motor on it now uh, these are some parts I've made for the shaper. So that just looks like a finger. And this is the pulley for the mini lathe, which goes on its three phase motor. And it needs a keyway in it. So this is made specifically because it's so small, only just long enough to do a triple pulley. It's only aluminium, so it should be fine. This was the one that came with it. It, it is maybe too big it might just work but uh, I made another one which is a little bit smaller just to make sure it's about about four millimeters three millimeters less diameter and it easily does the job I think that's a 16 mil I can't remember pulley so that's the pulley arrangement this is the fake motor I've made, so the DC motor in the mini lathe is as long as that, is that long. And it has two fixings, like you see there, if you can see them, there you go, two fixings. So this is what I've made as a dummy motor. The shaft isn't that size, this is a spreading, a, a spreader between the two bearings, so the two bearings are pressed onto it basically. Uh, and I have a locking on this side and a shoulder on that side. So there's the three gears on that side, which 
match up the three gears on the motor, so I can swap belts between to get three speeds from the motor. It's also VFD, but at very low speeds, you want more power, so I decided to go for three gears because I've got the room. These run a 10mm shaft. The shaft is done. These gears aren't very easy to get off. Yeah, they're a pretty tight fit. They're, all, they're a slight interference fit. This side's not. This side's how it should be. That side's a bit tight. And I've got my tool as well. Why not? What's good? So these need keyways in them as well. That don't fit. So this is the arbor or tool holder that came with the shaper. I made one which goes in there as well. These need drilling broaching and they've already got the threads in the end so I just need cross drilling, broaching or using round high speed steel. And then they'll be going up and running. Then I can put the three phase on it and it can run at full power. I'm not sure how well this little DC controller in here that I put in here is going to work and how long it's going to work for. And I've got a motor plate, sorry, a lathe plate which fits inside the splash tray at the bottom here. It's 10mm steel and I'm using that to stiffen the lathe up slightly. Um, and as the three phase motor mount as well. And that's cut to length, but it's not cut to shape, size, or face, or anything, it's just hot rolled uh, plate, terminal plate. Uh, so that's all, just letting you know that this is not the final lathe layout. This lathe is going to be completely stripped down again, way more. Right, let's get this thing up and running. Right, so far we have the saddle on. And it's a bit tight because well, it's a bit tight. Uh, it's just at the limits of how tight you want it really. But it feels the same all the way down. So that's good. Let's have a closer look at it. So it slides from the front to the rear of the lathe and there is no play in it. So the bed gibs are, or the bed keepers are adjusted. Now the bed keepers grub screws, one was missing and it's already jammed in another grub screw. As you can see, the unit comes off, no problem. There's the other side, it has got all the keeps on it, and as you can see, it's got the carriage lock on it. That's what the setup looks like. The rear of the carriage lock is not fitted, I'm leaving that off because I need to measure it when I'm making the pin, which we're going to make in next. So the pin is going to screw into that hole there, it's going to have a M6 thread going into it and it's going to be a shank going out of it and the shank, uh, I'm going to make that pin as well, <laughs> uh, the shank is going to go into the uh, the piston which is going to go up and down which is going to draw that gap up slightly. It's very hard to move as you can imagine because it's pretty thick steel, it's bolted onto pretty thick steel, there's no real flex there but there's uh, about 1000 clearance. Right, I wasn't going to bring you back now, what I'll do is just put the eight screws in, nothing special. I'll put the two front wave wipers on first and they are wiping. And I'll put the rear right wiper on and that's wiping. I'll just put the front, sorry, the rear left wiper on. It, it got tighter when the rear right wiper went on, but as soon as the rear left wiper went on, it's now locked. It's now it's, well, it's not locked, but it's gone a lot tighter now. It's really hard to move. So the wipers themselves have just tightened up. 
Well, the, the grinding you can hear is the um, carriage lock because it's so close. There's bits of the casting underneath there which haven't been uh, milled or whatever. I think it is milled down the bottom there, but there's bits down there that catch on it and I'm not, I, don't, I don't care. I know what the noise is. If I take that off, it doesn't make the noise, so that's fine. It needs to be that close because there's not much flex in it. And that'll be fine. Anyway, that's what I was just pointing out is it got a lot tighter. I can't really move it with one hand very, very easily anymore. Anyway, I shall continue. Uh, it's now nine o'clock, so I think I can get the angle grinder out and I'm going to grind the dowel pins. Uh, I'm going to lock tight them into the plate and we'll build the apron up because it's a pretty essential part for the lathe. <laughs> And it gets a whole lot of parts out of the way, so it'll get the gear out of the way and the apron out of the way and allow me to finalise the lead screw. And also, it will allow me to fit the Darth Vader chip shield. <laughs> I'm going to modify this some more once I've, once I've got it up and running. This is going to have a section cut out here, somewhere, and then it's going to have a bowed section put in which is going to just about touch the lathe bed to allow bigger chucks to go in, just slightly bigger chucks, it's just going to have the radius put in there. Righty ho, the apron, I have the shim and I had to heat it up to get it off so it's warped slightly. And I've tried to sand it flat again and well, that's as much as I'm doing, it will hold some oil. <laughs> so it warped when I was uh, on super gluing it. And it's 0.5 of a mil, so it's not going in with RTV, so I've got to make a gasket. And when I find the gasket, here is the gasket. So I've made a gasket, it's not great, but I think it will suffice. And the gaskets go in there. I've ground the two pins to size and thread lock them in, so a soft Loctite. And there's the gasket, so I'm going to put some grease on that gasket for sealant, because that's good for cardboard. It holds pressurised water into a cooling system and seals oil pumps, not a problem. done it many times. It is a cardboard box from a pizza packet. <laughs> it is 0 0.043 millimetres thick. The shim is 0.53 millimetres thick and there's 0 0.32 millimetres gap. So once the gasket is compressed, there should be 0.1 millimetres there for a oil film or more, Point, 0.1 or 0.2 millimetres. Right, I am going to rebuild that now, which will mean be putting the shafts back in. And dropping stuff as usual. Uh, so I'm going to put the little drop drive shaft back in again. <laughs> Don't try and catch them because you drop something else. Uh, get that back in, which goes out. And I will rebuild it. And we'll have a look. I don't know if it just slips straight back in again. Well, actually, and I'm just pushing it back in again. And I think it's going back in. Hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm, it's close. So a bit more persuasion and that will go in. It nearly pressed all the way in with my thumb, but I think a little bit of a tap with a copper hammer. Let's have a look. Copper hammer. She's in. Wasn't taxing at all. I need some grease. Whatever, whatever happens now, I need some grease. And I ain't got it. Oh, I have got some grease here. Ooh, grease. 
Let me zoom you back out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. Zoom it out a little bit. So I've got a packet of grease here somewhere. I don't know where it is now. See ya. Don't matter what grease you put on a cardboard gasket, but you've got to make it waterproof or oilproof, whichever one you're doing. And it doesn't have to be lathered in it. Usually what I'll do is I'll just put some in my fingers. Uh, like this. Rub it together in my fingers. And uh, coat the thing. This is the sealant, this is not a this is not for any kind of lubrication. So after I put all this together, I don't want any of this oozing out into the oil or the coolant. Not too much of it anyway. Might have to get a little bit in there, but there we go. It's a grease seal. As you can see it's a pizza box, so you can see that. There's the ingredients there. It's got some wheat flour and stuff in it. That's it on that bit there. Install that onto the housing and get the grease off my fingers and see what I dropped. Mm. Nothing important, I think. Righty ho! Uh, oh, yeah, I got the plate, didn't I? Make sure there's no dust on that from the floor or grit. That's going to be sealed in there now. Feeling good. So it's all dry. There's no grease or anything inside there apart from obviously on the gasket you just saw me doing. The plate goes on. And I'm just going to put some screws in it. Tighten it down. Fingers crossed now it still turns. Yeah. It still turns and the brass shim is just touching the metal which is okay because it's brass against steel, that's fine. Tight. Tight. Tight, that's them three tight. Four, <laughs> count. this one up tight 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 does it still turn yes it does I think that's gonna be perfect right I'll see if that leaks oil just want to trim that gasket a bit around the outside So I'm going to use, I could use a scalpel. But I'll use a Swiss Army knife instead. Good enough. Alright, is it going to leak? Do you think it will leak? Obviously it's going to leak through the shaft there, so that's going to be the, like the oil level just there. In that little house in the bottom. Can I some oil in it? What kind of oil shall we in it? What do you reckon? Motor oil? Way oil? I was going to put high point, high pressure gear oil in it, but <laughs> what I'm thinking is no, because it stinks. I want to put it in it now anyway because it's going to be on its side like this, it's just going to run straight out. Um, next thing I'm going to put in is going to be half knots. So clearly that needs to go that way. And that feels absolutely awful. I'm sure you can hear that. It's got to have some kind of lubrication in it. And the amount of times that I'm going to go in there 
is going to be minuscule so that is having grease in it again if you didn't catch on this is high pressure bearing grease so I'll just squirt it a little bit in there and now I'm putting tools in my way as usual and because I'm not certain the shaft is going to get everything it needs on it. I'm just going to put, you can see where the galling was happening already just from its small amount of usage. So I'm going to put some more around there and in that divot there for the screw that will drag a bit of grease down with it. And just a liberal amount in there and it will squeeze out what it doesn't want and a bit on the end. And that will push them through the shaft with it. Just like that. Detent is there, so we'll have that facing upwards, detent is upwards towards the detent area and I'm going to sort of in and out a bit that way, then I'm going to sort of in and out a bit that way and now there should be plenty of grease in that cast iron, which there is, and things should start feeling better. I don't want to get too much into that, that detent hole because I want oil in that. Right, so detent to the top. And that just went in better. Like, <laughs> it was just like better. And there's hardly any grease spilled out the outside of it. Okay, so it's just filled the gap around the outside really nicely. something like that. But first of all I'm going to get the gib strip installed after I've got a liberal amount of grease in there. So we can show them working, there you go, they're working. That's open. So you might have thought there was no clearance at the top here. Oh yeah, I spent quite a lot of time making sure there was just enough clearance at the top there. He says and we'll stick some grease in that area there. So that's down that dovetail. That's behind the gib. Just don't any rust happening in there. And that's all the way over the surfaces. And there. And that should ooze everywhere now. It should be slick and smooth. So I'll put a liberal amount of grease in there. Got it all the way into the gibs and all the way into the dovetail. Lovely jubbly. And uh, that's not the gib. That's just a piece of tool steel. We'll try and find the gib. There it is. I would check this for flatness because well basically it's just a little up and down thing and it can't be that bad because it's, it's really small, a really small thing. But you never know, it could be the wildest most bent thing in the planet. But it doesn't look too bad. And we'll try and get that in the right way. Eh? After we put all the liberal amount of grease up the, up the gib slide. Don't really want to put grease in here, but I'm not getting in here again. There's going to be no chips in it, so let's just put grease in it. For the time being, if it causes a problem, I'll oil it like I did on my uh, whole brook. I'm not sure if I get this in there. I will. I think that was way too much grease. 
and what to worry. That clearly isn't in the right position. Try there. Oh, that's going further. Yeah, I think that's in the hole. That's definitely in its location. Oh yeah. I've just been pushing the gear up and down a little bit. And that's definitely in as well. So, we'll have to find a spring detent now. Okay, the apron assembly I think is complete. So it's got a ball bearing, a spring and a grub screw in there. And that's the detent, so that holds that up there so it doesn't vibrate back down again. I don't think the bottom detent is engaging fully but it's it's close and I've tightened that up so it's you know when it's down so when it's up it, it, it clicks in I could go tighter but I think the spring is at its limit now and that's quite smooth surprisingly smooth and you can hear there's grease in it but there's no grease in the threads I'm gonna whey oil all over the outside of this here and I'll just, I'll just squirt whey oil in there when I'm using the threading every time I do it on the whole brick that's what I do so yeah, I'm going to have to do something about that now because I think that is complete enough so I've decided to use slide whey oil Try and get it in without squirting it everywhere. So I'm just as you can see it going in there. Yeah. I'm just squirting oil in there now. I don't know how much to put in there. I'm gonna put a little bit in too much, I should imagine, for a start. Uh, it's probably filled to the brim now. <laughs> so me. And now the top of the gear is dry and there's no oil here so when I turn this yeah I'm getting oil all the way to the top now and the grunching noise has gone away yeah there's definitely oil on that gear Definitely transferring. Is it coming out yet? <laughs> it's starting to ooze out everywhere. Oozy slide oil. Now I'm waiting to see if we get any come out of that. So I'll do that for a while. Let's just see if we can force it down that side. Oh yeah, I'm getting oil coming out the side here now, yeah, that's all good, I just want oil to come out of here, well, well I've been going for a while, I've got a little bit finger achy so I put the handle on, and finally it's there, it's just come out the end so it's working, everything's working. Still move it. I'll be happy. There we go. I can still move it. Okay. I might have to strip the whole thing down again to do that. <laughs> yeah, it still still feels pretty tight. Oh, let's readjust me. I must have moved me the carriage stop. Carriage lock, 
Right, we'll undo that. Undo that. Now it should either make more noise or no noise. Oh, like, yeah, definitely more noise. And we'll adjust it. He says. <laughs> I think the adjustment method was down to the bolts, lift up at the back, tighten it up. I think that was the adjustment method and it worked in beauty. Catches it so tight in there, it catches very slightly. Bothered not. Right, apron, that was it. Apron, we're doing the apron. guarantee you that that other grub screw is just touching that slightly because it's more or less the same height if not slightly higher yeah it's gonna be just touching that slightly so I've got a dilemma do I grind that out or do I put the other grub screw in I think the other grub screw is going in isn't it You know what's going to happen now, you know. I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes readjusting that now. <laughs> you don't want to see that because there might be some swear words. Okay, swearing is finished. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of swearing, thankfully. And uh, I've got a full movement to go. It's a bit, it's a bit stick slippy. spot just there, that's alright. Well, it seems to me that it can either fit uh, just doesn't seem to fit properly. Pain in the backside, then basically try and line it all up, and then when you didn't get your bolts out for a start, that really helps. Well, I found it now, so I'm gonna be in the way for the whole of this shot, I should imagine. Yes, it seems to be fitting now. 
head in the way again, head in the way again. Still not in. Why are you doing this to me? I think the rack, by the looks of it, is too low. That's what it looks like to me. Although now it seems to be in, so I might be lying. What's that looking like now? Completely bound up. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. I don't know what it's completely bound up on, though. Interesting. I can't do anything there. I don't know what it's bound up on. It's definitely bound up on something. Literally, there's lots of pressure on that now. So I'm going to have to work out what the gap is. And I am going to have to space that out. Hmm, interesting. Now I'll space that down there. Obviously. Now the uh, Need screw is too high. Obviously. That is not smooth. That's all. <laughs> it's starting to work now, and obviously with the feeler gauges in it's straight. So we'll try uh, a few more thou on the feeler gauges. I can see it's hitting the grub screw because it's hitting the grub screw. Okay, that's not good then. These things are sent here to test us, aren't they? Let's see what the gap is there, we'll make a shim up and we'll make it fit. Like. Not a bad guess, 15 pound goes in that side. Definitely goes in there. Doesn't go in this side, this is 50. Oh, it is. No, it's less than 15 pound that side, so it's not going to be square. That'd be just too easy, wouldn't it? Eh? Being square. So here we are looking down at the bottom at the way the thing. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> we'll start calling this the thing, like most things get called the thing. It is the bed keeper, I think it's called something like that. It holds the saddle down onto the bed. The keeper plate. Now the the cog, which the gear, shall I say, which engages onto the onto the rack, goes through in this area here, directly where that gib adjuster is, whatever you want to call this, keeper plate adjuster, and it's literally right where that is, literally right there. Uh, I bet you anyway that's around about 80 thou. <laughs> that knot, that's a half width knot. So there's a 15 thou gap there. So I'm going to make up a brand, brass shim set. About a little bit wider than that bolt there. And I'm just going to slip it in there and then tighten these up. And a 12 thou one for that one there. And take both of those out. 
because they are in the way. Hi, right, I battled and I won. <laughs> it was intense. Oh, yeah, I've got a bit of shim left over here, which obviously I forgot to pack away. The shim was part of the field gauge set. And it had two 17,000 shims either side. And there we go. In the centre, it had 9,000 shim. So clearly, it's, it's banana shape now. And that's the only way you can get it to uh, touch in all three places. So it's nice and square though because it's sitting on shims. So that's, that's all good. Then I run into the next problem. I thought I'll stick the front shield on now because I can. And it don't go on now. <laughs> So it's touching the, the the underside here. So yeah, this bit here is now touching the apron because it sticks out a bit. So I'm going to get the angle grinder out now and grind that off. So that's going on next. Let's put it somewhere safe. Uh, the parts underneath are getting less and less and less. But I think, ooh, before I go ahead and do that, I should imagine it's probably time to go ahead and set the gibbs up on the compound. I'm getting very close now, very close. Very close indeed, getting quite excited. First cuts will be coming up soon. Interesting indeed. I don't think they were long enough. Maybe they are. Just chuck them on the floor. So I've got chucking them on the floor, eh? I don't think they're long enough, but maybe they are. They look chewed up. I look chewed up badly. Things were going well. That's definitely the bolt. And it's, well, I just took that one in the uh, scrap metal bin because that's broken. <laughs> See that one screws in nicely. I thought it was all up when I was just going to put it together then. And no, still messing about. I don't know, I still don't know what these bolts are for, I'm going to the lathe. So I ground that bit off there. Yeah, I cut my finger. I ground that bit off there, just just a little bit. Yeah. And now she fits on beautifully. So in there. First time we've seen any clashing. Not there, there isn't. I believe these are my bolts, they cut off stainless ones. There we go, the shield's on. No binding there. Let's get that under that way. Not in my way there. Excellent. I've cut two bolts to size. These are about a millimetre longer than the other ones for one. So, let's see. Oh, go in and don't bind up. These are the two, two criteria for these, because if they go through too far, they will bind up. And we that come back, back a bit further, there we go. And since these are not the bolts that came with it, which have got small, 
strangely small heads on all the bolts on these mini lathes. Maybe they've got mini bolts for mini lathes. Okay, so that is locked and then undone a little bit. And again, that is locked and then undone a little bit. And now, what it do a 360? Yes, so the bolts aren't too long. Okay, that is good. They might be slightly too long. But for the time being, that is good. Now that's not the smoothest of operations, is it really? Not really. Let's have a look inside it. So this is slide weight oil. So just squirt a bit on top of there. Get the oil working. This is about out this is. And we'll squirt some in behind the gib. Stop that from rusting. And coat the underside of the compound. Stop it from rusting. And let that all drip into that side hopefully. No, it isn't there. Excellent. Just not happening how you want it today. We'll try not to get oil all over the kitchen floor. Now it's got oil in. Is it gone tighter? Yes, of course, obviously. There we go. Now it's feeling smooth. Smooth. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, you just see a lot of forward and backwards motion now. So I've got lots of slideway oil which is allowing me to slide down the slideway instead of feeling bindy. That's all good. No more oil required. Put that back. Wrench, we want to call it. Oh, I'm getting close to the end now. It's similar to the last one. Similar. Similar. I can see there's some serious modifications happening around this part of the area. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but probably a whole new lead screw and uh, attachment method. Because this just feels crud. That's a lot smoother. I think I could have made those gibs tighter. Well, that's just not a problem, is it? There's only play in that. Oh, yeah. Right, before I lock the compound down, I want it bang on 90 for a start. See, that is what the wing is for. So I'll just hand it out of the way. Oh, 
Well, that doesn't move over 50 mil, so that must mean it is bang on. Right, what's this one look like? This one just feels slightly tight all the way down, so. And my arm in the way here, yeah, my arm in the way. It's a bit loose there, is it? I guess I'm going to have to get some, some more adjustment on that. Can't see myself using it that far in. I'm going to have to put a tool post on. So the tool's going to be there. That's as far forward as I can go. Obviously, with the original setup, you could go all the way forward, but. That is it for me. And if I want to go a bit further forwards, I can always just bring that up there to about there, and then put the lock stop on, which will just crimp that front gear up and stop it from going and put the rear lock stop on. So that'll be alright. I'm up to the front of that uh, centre that's in there at the moment. I am ready, set to go. What else can I do? There's a few bolts left down there. I can't think what they're for. One is for this, obviously. Where's that one? Yeah, this. Where's that one? That one. Maybe it's a bit long, man. Let's see. We'll see. Threading dial installation. Next problem. Threading dial can't go there. Threading dial needs a new hole. Threading dial is going to go on like that. So the original hole for the threading dial puts the threading dial too high. clashes with my shield so I didn't like it there anyway because you couldn't see it properly I am putting it somewhere else easier to see so I'm going to have it sticking out so it being like that so you can see the 16T on it. Oh, well, if it's been like that, so you can see the 16T on it. I'm going to have it more like that, but lower down, obviously, because it's it's turned around. A bit of a shame. So I've got to dismantle everything now to drill and tap a new hole. <laughs> That's the threading dial. Alright, so you're looking at it and you're thinking, hmm, okay. Well, I'm pulling down on it now and it's going... <coughs> pushed up on it. <coughs> Does you see that amount of free play there? Yeah, it's not great. Now, when I first got this, it had no lubrication at all on it. Now it's got... It's got a bit of slide way oil in it and it actually turns with one finger whereas it was just seized solid basically you couldn't you can see it's, it's, it's a bit sticky 
a bit rubbish, but I'm going to require it if I want to be doing some threading. So, I'm going to modify that, I think. So these are the bits inside and they want you to change these bits so you slip that into the unit, it goes up, it can't go through because the threads, sorry the, the teeth, the gear can't go through there, there is no bearing on it so it's steel and cast iron there which should be alright but there is, uh, let's see that amount of play so it's pretty rubbish <laughs> so I might just get small taper roller bearings actually I might see what the smallest taper roller bearings are that I can get and modify the whole thing to take taper roller bearings. And then obviously modify all these shafts exactly the same, so they're all exactly the same dimension. So when I put the bearings on, slip it together, put the number dial on, tighten it up with the screw, and they're automatically preloaded. I think that's what I'm going for taper roller bearings because they'll take the lateral and the axial loads perfectly and this is pretty crap there isn't even a zero marker on the on the face so I think you can see where it's wearing unevenly up here so I think first things first is clean that up strike a line on it put some paint in it and put a zero in it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea.